Hi there, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. This is Jennifer McGuire. Today I am sharing with you several easy ways to add touches of gold to your cards. Now I know foiling is a great way to get gold, but foiling isn't for everyone and sometimes you want something that you can do with your stamps, stencils, and dies. So that's what I'm focusing on today. Some of these techniques will also offer texture, some will be super smooth, but all will have a little bit of gold shine and all are very easy. Before we get started, I did want to give you a heads up that registration has started for the Hero Arts Holiday Stamp Along. Now this is a virtual event that happens in the beginning of November and has all the teachers that you see here and I'm happy to be one of those teachers. Now the reason I really like Hero Arts virtual events is that they are very affordable. You can sign up for the class without having to get the supplies and you will learn techniques that you can do with your own supplies or you can purchase supplies and create the exact same projects. I like that there are both options so there's something for everyone. I also like that Hero Arts events are very laid back, comfortable, and very enjoyable. So I'll put information for that below, just in case you're looking for more holiday ideas. Okay, back to the video. Let's start out with a way to add a touch of gold to die cuts. I have several options for you. Now this is the Hero Arts Tree Pattern Cover Plate Die. I love this die because it cuts all of those trees in cute little sizes and shapes. It does not cut the outside edge, so you could create a fun window front to a note card. Many things you can do with it. Dies like this are great because there are many ways you can use them, lots of techniques that you can do, and this would be a fun shaker card. What I'm doing is cutting from a few different shades of green cardstock, and I'm leaving the die cuts in the negative space just to make it easier for this technique, but you could take them out if you wanted to. I will be adding a bit of Hero Arts Gold Wax to the top of the die cuts. Now you can use your finger or you can use a sponge dauber or you can use like a makeup sponge, but the key is to just get a little bit towards the top of the die cut and just kind of drag it down softly. And this will give us kind of a gold glow, a soft gold glow at the top of each of these little trees. So by keeping the trees in the negative space, it just makes it easier to apply, but you can take the die cuts out if you prefer. Now this Hero Arts Gold Wax is inexpensive. So many things you can do with it. You can stamp with it. You can use it for mixed media. You can just use it on the edge of your card. But if you don't have a wax like this, you could also use a gold metallic ink pad. You could also use, um, like a, any kind of gold paste that you may have, but I really like this particular gold wax. It's a beautiful gold and gives just the right amount of shine. Notice I am putting it on very lightly so it's not covering up the green behind it completely. Because we're not using very much, it dries very quickly and a little goes a long way. Also, I really like that this wax cleans up very nicely. You can just wipe it off your desk and you can easily wipe it off your fingers when you're done. Again, applying it with your fingers is probably easiest, but I wanted to show you a sponge dauber works really well in case you're one of those who likes to keep your hands clean. Now we'll set these trees aside for a bit and let's do the background that'll be around the trees. I chose to use the Hero Arts Jingle Bell background stamp that you see on the left. I wanted to show you there's also a fa la la version on the right, but I went with the Jingle Bells. I have my Misty stamping tool and I'll place that cling stamp onto the door of the tool. I also have a Brutus stick and stamp mat in my Misty. That way it'll hold my cardstock in place as we stamp. What I like to do is line up my card panel straight on the stamp. Then I will close my Misty upside down and the sticky mat will grab that cardstock and hold it in place nice and straight while we do our stamping. I'm using a Hero Arts pool colored ink on here for a tone on tone look. And by the way, this piece is cut to be four and a quarter by five and a half inches. I absolutely love this stamp because it's great for a subtle tone on tone background like this or for techniques. Now from that, I'll use that same tree die lining up the edges and running it through my die cut machine. And by the way, I'll have all these blue trees left over for another project and the negative space of the green ones for another project. This is one of those dies that also is great for making more than one card at a time. 
Now I want to put this onto a note card of the same color, but I want it to really make it easy to add the trees in place. So I'm cutting a piece of Altenew double-sided adhesive sheet to be just about a little smaller than my note card, and that is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. I'm placing that adhesive sheet onto the front of the note card. Then I will remove the release paper, and this means that the entire front of the card is covered with adhesive. I'm using the corner of my misdeeds tool to make sure that I can place the top panel where the trees are die cut right on place, right onto the front of the note card. So I put my note card with adhesive in the corner, then I put this die cut in my hand into the corner, and then press down, and I'll be sure it lines up straight. Using a corner like that is really handy. Okay, so now the background is adhered down, but all of those trees is exposed adhesive, so we can easily pop in our little tree die cuts that we made earlier. Now I'll be honest, I did a lot of details on this and you could totally skip these details if you wanted to. I wanted the trunks to be brown, so I die cut the same uh, tree die from brown cardstock and I'm cutting off the little trunks and popping them into our background, right into that adhesive. You don't need to do this. You could also just color the bottom of your green die cuts with a brown marker. That would work too. I just wanted this lighter brown took me a few minutes to do, and for me, I enjoy those details, but do it however you find uh, most enjoyable. Okay, so I wanted to put some dimension to some of the larger trees on the background. So I'm doing a trick with the scoreboard. I'm scoring three of the same size tree right down the center. So I have this one here that has gold on the top. Then I have two others of the same size. There's no gold on these, you don't need to because these won't be seen and I'm scoring those right down the center. So you can see I'm just lining up with one of the grooves on my scoreboard and scoring right down the center. Then I will fold each of these in half. Now if you don't need to score, you could just fold it on its own if you want to. I just find creating the score line first makes it easier to fold. Okay, so we have the three folded trees and one of them has that pretty gold on the top, the one in my hand. Now the other two, I'm going to place into that exposed adhesive of the same shape. And I put the one folded piece on the left-hand side, the other folded piece on the right-hand side, and you can see how part of the tree is sticking up, right? So I'm gonna flatten those down so you can see they're each folded down. And then onto these flaps of the tree, I will put some strong liquid adhesive and then place our pretty tree with the gold on top right onto it. So what's happening is those folded trees on the left and the right are giving some dimension to that tree on the front. So it kind of pops up as you take it out of your envelope. You can see I've already done two of these trees. I'll do another one so you can see it in action once again. This is a technique you can do with lots of different uh, symmetrical shapes. So you could do this with circles, squares, hearts, stars. Um, I did with a butterfly on one of my recent videos. This is just a way to build up some dimension that will flatten when it goes to the mail. So there I have two folded trees glued into the opening. And then right onto the other side of those folded trees, I'm putting strong adhesive and then a die cut that has the crease down the middle right on top of that. And you can see how using that Hero Arts gold wax on the top of these die cuts gives it just this soft, subtle shine at the top of each of the trees. But you can still definitely see that it's green cardstock. Now I only did that folded tree technique for the larger trees. For the smaller trees in the background, I just glued a die cut in place so those are flat. Now it, I did spend some time creating all of those pop-up kind of folded trees. You could just do one on the background if you wanted to to make a focal point, but I really wanted to put the, all the details in this card because I was crazy about the die, the colors, and that background. Now I didn't want my sentiment to cover too much of the tree, so I decided to go with a thin sentiment strip. This is the new Hero Arts Christmas Sentiment Strip stamp set. And then I also have the Sentiment Strip die. Now this die has been out for a while from Hero Arts and they have several different sentiment stamp sets that line up with it. So it's one die that lines up with many stamp sets and this is the newest. So I have a piece of cardstock on my Misty stamping tool. I'm using my anti-static powder tool. I will stamp the sentiments, which is one big stamp with Versamark ink. Then I will add white embossing powder and heat set it. 
Then we can use that die to cut them all out at once. And this background gives you lots of sentiment strips. In fact, each strip has more than one sentiment. So all you have to do is snip them in half with your scissors and you have lots of sentiments ready to go. And by the way, that sentiment strip die there is great for just cutting strips that you can use with other sentiments or to create like rainbow backgrounds. Now I chose one of those sentiments and I glued two thin strips of scrap cardstock to the back of it so that when I glue it to my card, it'll have a little bit of dimension that'll help it to stand up a bit. You could use foam tape, but I'd rather use up those scraps that would normally go to waste. Now I used the tree background die to cut from gold so I could add the gold stars to a few of the trees. But then I decided, because I'm going a little overboard, that I wanted all of my trees to have little stars. So I broke out the Hero Arts Star Confetti die. It's over there on the right. I've used this many, many times in videos. I cut that from gold cardstock and that gave me a lot of different size stars. And I added one to the top of every tree. I will have lots of gold stars left over. I'll keep those in a little um, container in my drawer. So the next time I need a flat but shiny star embellishment, I can use those. Okay, here is the card. Remember, this could be simplified in so many different ways, but I wanted to make a special card with shine and texture and sparkle. You can see how that gold wax really makes those trees stand out even more because you've got that subtle soft shine at the top. Now that's a technique that you can do on the edge of any kind of die cut or even on the edge of your card. Here you can also see the dimension that we got by doing that folded tree, tre tree technique that allows you to get that little pop-up feature. And remember, that works with any symmetrical die shape. So this card shares the idea of adding a touch of gold to your project with a little bit of gold wax or uh, gold ink or gold paste, whatever you have on hand. And by the way, if you're not into gold, you could definitely do this with silver too. Okay, let's move on to our next idea of adding a touch of gold to your projects. And the cool thing about this next technique is it gives a really cool texture. For this one, I'll be using the new Hero Arts Poinsettia window die and layering stencils. Now these can be used together or separately. Using the stencils alone gives a beautiful frame image, but I decided to use them together. I cut the frame from the center of a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white panel, and you can see it cuts out the center, but the edges stay connected. You can snip it with scissors, but it does little cuts, which allows you to get some dimension. I'll show you that later. But first I'm placing that panel onto a grip mat that'll hold it and the stencil in place as I do my inking. So I lined up the stencil with the die cut behind it. It's easy to do. And now I can apply different colors of ink on top. You could use any inks you want. I'm using some of my favorite colors from Hero Arts. I really like their reds and greens. Now, the nice thing about having done the die cutting first is that the die creates little impression lines or little cut lines that bring some texture to that die cut. And the ink will catch in those lines. So you can see like down the center of the petals on that flower, it looks like there was a line there, but that was really just the ink picking up on the paper or the paper picking up the ink and holding it a bit darker there. So very little effort was made to put this color down, but it'll look beautiful in the end. So over the first stencil, I did a lighter red. Over the second stencil, I did a darker red. And then at the center of these flowers only, I'm using a very dark red. And that will just give a little more interest to these flowers in the end. In fact, I like that so much, I'm going back to the first stencil and adding just a little bit of darker color to the center of that too. Sometimes little things like this, just adding a bit of darker color here and there can really make it pop. Now it's time for the third stencil. This one is for like the holly in the background and also for the center of the flowers. So I did one of my favorite greens, the fresh lawn color over the leaves. Again, not putting a lot of effort into this. And then I will do a brown over the center of the flowers. Using a smaller blending brush, this is pretty easy to do. 
I did decide I wanted a bit of a darker green on the inside edges of all of those leaves. So I'm coming in with a darker pine color and a small blending brush. And I also have a piece of blank stencil material there that I can move around to use as a mask if needed. I'll link to that product be below. I cut it into different size pieces and find it very helpful. All right, so now we have that darker green just on parts of those leaves. We can remove that stencil and now it's time for the last stencil. Now this one you could do a different shade of green over it, but I thought I would do some gold over this. See how it adds lots of details? I thought gold would be fun for this. So I'm placing that cardstock back down, lining up this stencil, and you could apply gold ink over this, you could do gold embossing, lots of things you can do. I thought I would share with you one of the coolest techniques. I love doing this. I'm using Hero Arts White Paste. Now you can use a variety of pastes, maybe you have some in your collection. I really like the Hero Arts White Paste because it is a good basic paste that you can add color to with reinkers, or you can use for techniques like this. It stays nice and smooth. I love this stuff. So I'm spreading a nice thin layer over the entire stencil, and then I will quickly put the excess product back into the jar, close that up, clean my stencil, clean the tool, get that all clean so it doesn't dry, and then come back to our panel. Before that paste dries, I'm adding gold embossing powder to it. You could do any color you want here. You could do green or whatever, but we're going for touches of gold, so I went with that. Then before the paste dries, I'm gonna heat set this. And what happens because the paste isn't dry, the gold embosses on top of the paste and the paste behind it kind of bubbles up, giving this really cool texture. So watch closely to those bigger areas of gold. See how it kind of bubbles up as you're heating it? I'm crazy about this texture. If you do not want that bubbling or the texture, just set this aside to let the paste dry for a while, then heat set the embossing powder, and then you'd get a smoother result. But look at that fun bubbling effect. I will be sure to do more of this technique in the future. I just wanted to do touches of gold today but I am really crazy about this technique. Encourage you to try it. Check out the final results. Lots of gold, lots of shine, lots of texture. Just a fun way to kind of step up a project like this one. Also, notice that I did not make sure that my red ink was completely dry when I added the gold embossing powder. So I got some little flecks of gold embossing powder on my flowers, but I liked it, so I went with it. That's another fun way to add a touch of gold. All right, now for a sentiment, I'm using the Hero Arts Winter Foliage Stamp and Die Combo. These are sold together. Lots of great sentiments and useful different sprigs and, and pine needles and such that you can use throughout the holiday season. So I want to stamp my sentiment at the center of a note card. So I'm using my Waffle Flower Grip Mat that will hold my cardstock in place as I stamp. And I have it in my Misty Stamping Tool. See that plus sign there at the center of that mat? That is helpful in finding a center point for your stamping. I chose the sentiment Peace and Joy, and I cut it apart so I could do peace above the word and joy. I have peace lined up right above that plus sign. Now I can take my note card and put it in that green rectangle that's on the grip mat. So watch, I'll line it up in that green line rectangle. This is just an A2 green note card. And I'm gonna check and make sure that goes in the center of my window. Yep, it does. So I can remove that stamped piece or the stenciled piece that we did and go ahead and stamp my sentiment in there. So again, I'm using that grip mat just to find the center point of that green note card. There are many different ways you can do this. I just find it easy with this grip mat. Okay, if you, by the way, if you want to learn more about that grip mat, I have a video showing more about it and I'll link to it up here in the top right. So I stamped Peace with Versamark Ink, and right below it, I'm stamping And Joy with Versamark Ink. I then can remove the note card, add gold embossing powder, and heat set it. If you want the sentiment to stand out more, you definitely could do white, but I wanted the gold to match that gold texture we just added. Now remember I said that this die cut cut the center out, but then only parts of the edges of the flowers and, and leaves on this. That's so you can kind of pop those up and get a little dimension. You could also cut around the rest of it to cut that frame separate, but I want to keep the outside edge. So I'm just putting glue around the outside edge and then adding it to our note card. 
I did trim a little bit off the edge of this so that a bit of that green will show on the edges of the note card. Couldn't decide which way I wanted to do it. I ended up going with this positioning, but you could use it either way. This would also make a great horizontal or landscape card if you prefer. All right, so I did finish that off by adding just a few little gold gemstones here and there. And here is a closer look at that texture and shine that we got by doing gold embossing on top of paste. You can also see how some of those petals and leaves are pulled up thanks to how this die cuts. So remember this idea of using paste with gold embossing powder. This is great for even over a background. You can use a background stencil, apply the paste, put on the gold embossing powder and heat set. And you can get a lot of that gold textured shine. All right, let's move on to another way of adding a touch of gold. Now this one has quite a bit of gold on it, but I do two different types of gold embossing. And I also show you how to create a gold embossed mat. Okay, for this card and the next few, I'm using the Hero Arts Christmas Foliage Stencil Set, Stamp Set, and there are dies. Now, I am just using the stamp and stencils for the first card. Then the next two cards, I'm only using the stencils. I'm not using the dies, but know they are available so that you can cut out some of those flowers and kind of pop them up off of your card. Now, although I'm not using these dies today, I wanted to mention this because I get a lot of questions. What do I use to cut apart my dies? I use the Hero Art Snippers. I highly recommend these. They come with that little lid. What I do is I cut a die separate from the others. And then remember those tiny little pieces of metal that you want to snip off? I just put the snippers up against that little metal, like I clamp it as I'm doing here, and then I bend back and forth with the die, and it takes that little piece of metal off without it shooting across the room. And I do that on top of a baby wipe so I don't have to worry about those little metal pieces getting lost. I can wrap it up and throw it away. So again, I'm not using those dies today, I just wanted to mention that. Now for this first card, I'm starting out by gold heat embossing the stamp image. Now you could make this less gold if you want by using black ink or maybe a gray, but I wanted to go all out with the gold today. So that's plain gold embossing powder. I put that onto my waffle flower grip mat and now I am using some anti-static powder tool on that because I'm gonna do more embossing. I'm skipping to the last stencil in the bunch. We'll add the color later. But this one just does the flower centers and little berries. So just tiny little dots on this stencil. I am putting Versamark ink over this stencil with a Tim, ink, uh, Tim Holtz ink blending tool. You could also use a Versamarker pen here. Either works. But you just want to get that clear sticky ink over the stencil. I'll then remove the stencil. And this time I'm using gold glitter embossing powder. So this will give gold glitter shine to just the little berries and such on this background. So this is a reminder that you can add gold embossing over a stencil. You just put your stencil down, put Versamark ink over the stencil, and then you can add whatever embossing powder you want. And in this case, it's a sparkly gold. So our outline is gold, our little details here are sparkly gold, and you can see that fun bit of sparkle and dimension that we get. So this is yet another way you can add a touch of gold to your project. Now, a lot of this has gold on it, right? But notice that those berries and flower centers are that sparkly gold that really stand out. All right, now let's add some color to this. And I'm gonna add the color a little bit differently than I normally do. And I'm gonna do this with the rest of my examples today. Instead of going full color over these stencils, I'm just doing partial color. I want a soft look for this. So I'm lining up the first of the stencils over my background on my grip mat, which will hold it down. And I'm applying a Hero Arts inks once again with an ink blending tool, but notice I'm only putting the ink towards the inside edge of the leaves. And the other tips I'm leaving almost white. So it gives this really soft look to it. So let's do that again with the next stencil. And I'm lining that up. I'll put that color kind of darker towards the tip of the leaves and then leave it uninked on the other tip of the leaves. So it just gives a really soft look. I highly recommend trying this. If you're used to just doing solid color over a stencil, try just doing a softer approach. And you will see more in my unoutlined examples of using these stencils in the next two examples. 
All right, so I'm going through this pretty quickly because it's very basic, just lining up those stencils with that stamping that we've already done, the heat embossing we've already done, and getting this soft kind of spring-like color for a holiday card, which I think is a fun change. And by the way, I'm gonna end up with three cards using the same products, but they'll look very different because of the different approach I take to the inking. So stay tuned for that. All right, I have another idea for adding a touch of gold to your card, and that is to create a thin mat around your card panel that has that shine. And I wanted the shine of this mat to match the embossing we did. So I have a piece of white cardstock here, and on the edges, I'm pressing Versamark ink. And then I'm sprinkling on that same gold glitter embossing powder. Now there's no sense doing it in the middle, that'll get covered up, so I'm just doing it around the edges. Then I can heat set that, and then take my trimmed embossed floral image that we did the inking on, and glue that over it. And that gives us that nice gold glitter matte. I do like to take a sanding block, by the way, and just rub, rub along the edge just to make sure there aren't any sharp spots from that glitter. It just smooths it out and makes it look like a custom cardstock. All right, so we glue this in the center, and now our gold mat matches that little bit of embossing we did on the berries earlier. For sentiment on this one, I use the Hero Arts Color Layering Seasonal Tree Stamp Set. I love the little animals in this. This is a layering set that you can use in many ways and there are coordinating dies available. Now I like it because there are dies for the sentiments and I chose to use the season's greeting sentiment along with the coordinating die for this card. And I like that the die cuts really close to the sentiment so it gives a nice clean result. All right, so here is our completed card. All of it's glued on a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card. You can see that sentiment that I added there that I stamped in black ink on white cardstock. I also added some pink pearls to the background just to bring out more of the pink that I did on those flowers. And there's a closer look at that soft inking I did and that gold glitter embossing that we added over our berry stencil just to add even more sparkle. All right, so that one has a lot of gold, but a few different ways of adding touches of gold. Okay, let's move to our next example. And this one uses the same stencils, but we're gonna skip the stamping. And I'll show you another way to add a touch of gold. I have blue cardstock this time, a light blue, and I'm starting with the leaf stencil. Really doesn't matter what order you go in. I'm applying the same fresh lawn green ink that I've been using many times. And once again, notice I put the ink heavy towards one tip of the leaf and then blend out to nothing on the other tip. So I'm not really putting ink over the whole opening, just kind of one side. And that gives this really soft result. We did it on the last card, but because it had the outline, it was hard to tell. You'll really see it here on this blue cardstock where we don't have the outline. All right, so I'm doing different shades of greens and pools here just to do a fun um, color on blue cardstock. Now, because I'm using a colored cardstock, I'm trying to stick with colors that look good on top of it, like the blues and greens. And by the way, this time, I'm just lining up my stencils easily by putting the top left corner of the stencil in the top left corner of my paper, and I know it'll line up each time. All right, so now we're down to the berry stencil, and we'll just do some quick color over this, a little bit darker so it pops a bit more. And I love the look of this without the outline. I really appreciate products like this that work well together separately because you can get different looks or pick and choose what you might want to get. Now, let's step this up a little bit with some gold detail, and I'm doing this quickly with a gold gel pen. Now, I don't have the stems here because I didn't use a stamp, right? So I am just drawing some stems in, not all of them, just some, with that gold gel pen. So you could do maybe like a geometric stenciled background and add little gold circles or dots here and there with a pen. You could trace in openings with the pen. You could add lines with a gold pen. Anything just to add that little touch of gold. It's hard to see the shine in the video, but the gold pen does give us some of that touch of gold. So I trimmed that background down and added it to a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card. And I added one of my sentiment strips that I had left over from my first card. I also put some white pearls here and there for dimension. Here you can kind of see the gold that I did along some of the leaves and little gold dots that I did at the center of the flowers and berries. 
So using a gold gel pen is an excellent way to add just a touch of gold or silver if you choose. I have one more example that's a fun twist on this last one. Now I did the inking over the stencils off screen, but I used the same greens and reds I've used throughout this video and did so on a soft craft cardstock. And look how beautiful that is. I love that look. I again skipped the stamping. Now this technique idea for adding a touch of gold is to trace inside of your stencils. So I am lining the stencils back up with the inking I've already done. I can just line it up in the corner of the cardstock. Then I'm tracing around the outside edge of all of the openings with a gold gel pen. This will give us kind of an offset gold outline that's different than the stamp would give. Think about it, the tip of the gold gel pen isn't super fine, right? It's kind of, um, it's kind of wide tip, you know, where you write. So when you run it along the inside edge of the stencil, it kind of goes inside along the edge of the inking. You can see it there, it's kind of offset and it is gorgeous. So you just get that little bit of gold outline offset with the inking we've already done. Now, if you use more bold colors, the gold would stand out more, but I wanted that soft touch of gold. So this is a reminder that you can trace the inside of your stencils to get a fun offset outline. This is one of those I wish you could see in real life. It's gorgeous. All right, now for the background of my note card, I thought I'd do some subtle stamping using the Hero Arts Star Flakes background stamp. This one is really fun, can be used for a variety of occasions. And I just stamped that with a soft sand ink on a white note card. You don't see much of it, but it's sticking around that center card panel. So here is a look at the finished card. You can see that bit of stamping on the edge. You can see that gold outline that we got over our inking using that tracing technique with the gold gel pen. I used that same season's greeting sentiment I used before and also added some gold pearls here and there on the background. So this is a reminder that you can trace the inside of your stencils, especially with gold, for that little touch of shine. Now before we go, I want to encourage you to check out the entire new Hero Arts holiday release. I will link to it below. It is one of the best holiday releases I've ever seen. There has a little bit of something for everyone, a really good classic holiday release. So let me show you a few other products I didn't get a chance to use, but I think you might like. Here we have the Hero Arts Peking Snowman and Peking Reindeer. So the thing I like about Hero Arts dies is the price is good here because it's just these single dies, right? But you can cut your die cuts in different areas to layer them up very easily. So you get the look of layered die cuts without all the cost. Now these are cute because you can make them look like they're peeking outside of a window or off the edge of your card. I'll be sure to use them in a future video. I showed you a few of the background stamps that I like today, but I also really like this one. This would be beautiful gold heat embossed on gold matte cardstock. So you get that gold cardstock with lots of texture, beautiful for a background. There's also a stencil like this. So that's just a peek at some of the other Hero Arts pro products in this release. I really do encourage you to check it out. A little something for everyone. If you're interested in any of the products I use today, they are linked below in my YouTube description. I will link to a couple other related videos here at the end if you're looking for more inspiration. And I thank you for spending this time with me. Have a wonderful week.